Big worm coming through. Welcome on back to the channel, Fishing Freaks. It is summertime, it is hot, and it is time to do some worming, some big worming, summertime dangling. So that's what we're gonna be doing and talking about in today's video. And today's adventure is sponsored by the bold and powerful Mercury Motor. Mercury Motors, ladies and gentlemen, they've been around the industry forever. You know the name. It's what I choose to run on the Silver Bullet. In fact, I just ordered another one to go on the next Silver Bullet because I like the performance of the motor. Uh, it's good on gas mileage, I do like that. Uh, the biggest thing for me is the mid-range response, but it's got great top end, it's got great torque. Uh, there's just that V8 and that thing starts up too. It just gets me excited to go bass fishing. So uh, check out Mercury Motors. They have ton, tons of motors, including some amazing new saltwater series motors that they're bringing out. Uh, but the link is down below, so check them out. They're gonna be scooting us across the water today, going dock to dock. That's right, we're gonna be doing dock fishing, so let's get into it. Hang on, hang on. Come back. <laughs> Almost had an issue right there. Matt started pulling out before the boat was completely off the trailer. That would have been bad. Overcast, windy day, summertime on a lake full of docks and rocks. So today we're out on a DFW lake and it's full of docks. You know, the water's sitting in the, the mid 80s at this time of year, but it's it's really not gotten up into those upper 80s yet like it normally does. We're normally hitting a streak of 100 degrees in July and the water is super hot. Fish are moving out deep, but this year has been a little different. The weather has been milder. We've had quite a bit of rain and these temperatures are keeping these bass in that mid depth. We'll get into more of that here in a minute, but we started out the morning just throwing some spinner baits because I just started seeing shad everywhere and we're not out super early where there's a good top water bite and all of that, but just seeing tons of shad pushed up with some wind, getting into our first batch of docks and somehow my buddy Matt, who I'm fishing with today, he ends up hooking in to a nice catfish. A little chop for the spinner bite. That trench hawk's coming out at some point today, though. It's already on. It's already on. There we go. A lot of bait in here. It's shallow. Oh, I just got bit. Felt like a white bass pop or something. Sorry to have the same. Up oh, shallow. What is that? A catfish? No. Oh. Oh, you got a cat? <laughs> Maybe that's what hit me. Man, dude. These fish are behind. Catfish normally spawn in May, June. Up there on the bank hitting spinner baits. That normally happens in May. Dude, that's a nice cat. Good dinner there. <laughs> you know? He's like just it. probably torn up your war eagle. Uh, if you want to just ply her him. Yeah, I don't want to put it on the boat. Oh, you know what might be better than that? I've got those Guggen grippers. Come here, Rufus. It's a tasty treat, man. Put him in some batter. <laughs> That's a big It's a bit. It's bent 90 <laughs> degrees. It's funny how bass really don't do that spare base, you know? Like you catch a catfish or a drum, striped bass. Spare baits aren't lasting that long. So once we started figuring out spinner bait is not the deal. We fished them hard. We fished them up into a couple of feet of water. We fished them out, you know, out in deeper, the deeper parts of the docks for suspended fish, you know, fishing them four or five feet down. That's just not the deal. It's time to get out the worms. And this is what it's really all about when you get into that midday in the summertime, fish start to get lethargic. It's hard for them to resist a worm and in this situation 
I'm gonna be throwing a straight a straight tail worm, a finesse style worm, and it's one of our bigger our bigger worms. It's the Slim Shake. Come on, baby. Giants. What's new? It's turning turn into a worm game. No, it's a bass. Oh yeah, he's a bass. We're out here fishing 20 feet of water. That thing was in three. Oh, that's a good one. That's that's what that hog will get you. Yeah, nah. I thought it couldn't be done, a trench hog. <laughs> did you say, what did you say earlier about a trench hog? I was like, if you catch a catfish on a trench hog, I'll be impressed. Oh my God. Oh, we're back. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I put it away. I didn't, I didn't think, uh, bring that old snot rocket up here. Oh yeah, he's a spinner. Big spinner guy. Old trench hog. Got him good too. The size of catfish though I'm catching today. Dude, that's, a, a, that's an ugly one. That is an ugly one. Watch out, motor. Oh. Saved her. Well, dad gum it. The catfish are up and two foot. I could have swore to you when I saw that fish, it was a bass. You, you know your uh, your soft plastic smell pretty good when a catfish is eating it. So to walk you guys through the water elimination process, which you often don't see in my videos, because there's usually like an hour, hours of just not catching them to then going to catching them because we're figuring things out. And that, that in between part of this is figuring out what depth are these fish going to be in and the mid depth right here is key. So we started out on shallow docks, we fished the shallow docks, the water was turbid. So the, the wake was, was making that three, four, five foot of water pretty choppy and that usually will push fish out. Of, of when the wakes are, are too big, you know, from wind or if you're on a lake that has a ton of party boats and pleasure boats and things like that, where they're running around and you have break walls like these did, it just turns into a washing machine. So those fish will usually get out in that mid depth area. And when I talk about mid depth, that's like eight to 12 feet of water. When I consider deep, deep is like 20 foot. So that mid depth, you know, even 15 is, is, is mid depth. And usually that is the deal for June, late May, June in Texas, where we're at mid depth. And then you get into July, you're going deep. This year has been different. I've seen a lot of lakes where that mid depth is still in play. And these fish have yet, and the shad really have yet to move out to that deep, deep water. So we're trying to find docks that are in that mid depth and the first bite comes after we've fished all 20, 30 foot docks, fishing up in there. But when we get in to like eight to 12, that's where we get the first bite. Quality unit hooked up. Look at this bass, y'all. Spotted. A spotted largemouth. I'm gonna sling him. Oh, help your bed? No, I got, I got it, I got it. Keep dangling. I was literally just saying, I was like, I think we need to go. We haven't got bit. These docks look good. And then this guy at about 12 foot smacked it. And he's got these really cool spots. He's got cool spots on top of his head. Got him on that big slim shake. It's one of my favorite summertime, summertime lures. I lassoed him, dude. I hammered him with the hammer hook. There we go. All right, return you. Got to get him back in there quick in the summer. Look at that spots. It's so neat. 
see you. All right, y'all, I want to give you a new little rigging tip situation. So summertime dog fishing, three eighths ounce weight, and I've got a five odd hammer hook right here. So this hammer hook is it's actually designed to texpose. So you would rig it up like this, come in, come out of the plastic about a half inch, quarter inch in, you twist on the shank. And regularly you go through the plastic and then you hook, you just hook it on top right here. But when I'm dock fishing and in really thick cover, like we are here, I just don't want to get hung up. I'll actually just pinch it up and I'll go upward like you would a round bend worm hook. That way you'll still get you'll still get penetration when it comes out. You don't get as good of of hookups, but it's pretty darn close. So it's still got to go through that plastic there. But if you do it at that angle, keep your worm straight, you'll get a lot less snag. So you can still rig this hammer hook like you would a round bend. Little toppy top. It's only six foot on the post, so. Chance of a topwater strike. It's not wavy back here though, so I think they might still be up on less than that 10 foot. Saying, I like the dock look here. Oh yeah, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, there we go. Ooh, come on, baby. <laughs> Big in. Big in. I'm, I'm recording. Oh, yeah. Come on. He ding donged it, too. Big worm coming through. Should we sling him? I think we should. Folks at home, should we do it? Smash the like button. I feel you smashing it right now. Oh, yeah! Look at that guy. He's got a jaw issue. He's done been he's done been caught before. Still out there, munching on worms. We'll let him go to do it again. But man, we're getting on that uh, little midday dock bite right now. Few and far between, but they are juicies. Very, very nice. I'll still smell your messed up jaw, man. Look at that. That's crazy. We'll let you go. Thank you very much for that awesome eat. I hope your jaw feels better. I wish you the best. Love you very much. So, just came up to a new stretch of docks where it's a little shallower. The bait is still here. That's another thing that we were talking about. and Something Matt's noticed this year fishing. I've noticed it as well. Normally in July, these fish are way offshore. You know, the shallow bite is, is off, but the bait really hasn't migrated. And the other day I was, I was taking a little hike around one of my creeks by my house and I saw bluegill spawning, you know, middle of July out there. So the bait's still up shallow and we've seen bait in between these docks a lot and really no bait out deep. So I think that the fish are staying closer, which is great. Means we don't get it. We don't have to stay out there in live scope. All the fish. We can fish targets. Boom. Anyway, a couple of good fish today. Um, gonna keep throwing that slim shake. This is this is actually the the larger slim shake. Uh, we make a original size, then we make a big slim shake. Old big slim. Get her done. Very uh, very finesse profile, but it's still big. I like to throw bigger baits in the summertime. Mondo worm, jig, things like that. Um, but this doesn't get tangled up at all with that tail. It sinks really quick too because there's no uh, resistance of any appendages or anything. It's just a 
Just a cool bait. Great bait to throw on a big shaky head too. Like a football head, three quarter ounce, fishing out deep, but we're fishing it in uh, 10 foot and less. So we'll keep doing a little dock dangling. A little big slim here. That's just the deal. I, yeah, that's a spotted bass. I had him on, I had him on for a minute. Old spotty. I figured there might be a few spots in here. Little boy, let him eat it pretty good. Little spotted bass, they always munch it a few times. Pop, 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 pop. I don't think we've had a bite on the walkways yet. They're on the, on the meat. Oh! Oh, you mongler. Mongler? New word. I uh I had one there. I got I got bit. You need a cold beer? I need a cold beer. But anyway. Um. Oh, I just got a bite too. I got one. Oh yeah. Well darky. I got yanked up. That is a marina bass if I've ever seen one. All darked up. He's got rust on him, on his head. Just he's got a rusty pump. head. I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's got rust right there. Easy, man. You don't have to get your tetanus shot. It's right there where it kind of switches up depth. It's nasty. Dude, it's 20 feet right now. Oh yeah, there we go. Got him. Giant. Got him on that little mondo. <laughs> well, needed to happen. Yeah. They just like that slow worming right now. Slender profile. Slender profiles. After picking up a few more bites, just fishing around the docks, started to get stagnant. The wind was dying out, dying down. We decided to scoot across the lake and then go fish uh, some other docks and some other marina areas and things like that, see if that was gonna do anything. But we ran into a boater in distress and we decided to help them out. Yeah, 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 I got gotcha. you. Yeah, toss us that rope. We'll try to get you get you here quick. No, we can take you over there though. I just want to get you off these rocks real quick. People on the lake are nice people. Appreciate all the help. It's the no lake life. Yeah. Well, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck. Thank y'all. See y'all have a good one. You too. You too. I think I just felt my first raindrop. It's uh, it's gonna start raining here. We got one last row of docks that we're gonna try to tackle. Got two really nice fish today. Got got a couple of just keepers and then we got some nice ones pressure dropping maybe pick up a few more fish feeding up here but the key the key has been the depth the depth is uh 10 foot and under i think the first fish was in uh, just about 12 but uh they're they're not on that deep deep stuff and um so trying to find the docks that are in that like mid-depth area that's been the key there's a white mallard I've never seen a, a straight white albino mallard like that. That's crazy. It's good luck, dude. It's a good omen. Think so? 
out? Yeah, we just we just helped some people with their boat. We saw a white mallard. It's a sign of a seven pounder. You can see these dock posts up under here. This is what we're tackling. This is all these little posts that are up under the docks. Yeah, now it's due. Hmm, yeah. And they haven't been able to kick them out. Come here, baby. Do me one. Yeah, there we go. Just got that thump, thump. Just your average 14 inch keeper. I think I had to have gotten nicked on something at some point. This is a pattern. <laughs> well folks, as it turns out, it may not be any good luck at all to help a boater in distress, but it's the right thing to do, and that's why we did it. Matt ended up breaking off uh, probably one of the best bites of the day there. He caught catfish, he caught little bass, and then he got a big thump broke the fish off. Didn't retie a single time, but that's the way it goes sometimes. My dock fishing setup today, I was using 20 pound GS Fluoro. I don't go any less than that when I'm throwing worms and jigs around docks, especially if I'm in, in the south. If I'm in Texas, there's always that chance. I mean, you can catch a four or five pounder, get them on 15 pound test, they get you in there. And, it's not good. So I like to throw 20 pound at least. And I was using our muscle rod. You don't have to use the muscle rod in this situation. Uh, you could throw a, like a seven foot, like our go-to, um, and, and you could get a little bit more accuracy. But I just had my, my seven, six worm rod out and I'm able to get back a little further away from the dock and pitch up under there uh, easily. So either way, it's just kind of personal preference what rod length you want to go on, but uh, you definitely need at least a medium heavy, and I was actually going with a uh, heavy today with, with that heavy line. Pretty typical day, Texas, summertime, having to work for those bites, but slowing down with the worms, y'all. You gotta do it in the summertime. I don't care if you're fishing a pond or a huge lake, worms just shine in the summertime. They really do. For me, most of the time, I'm, I'm throwing this Mondo worm. That's what I have the most confidence in. Uh, but last summer, I started switching it up to the Slim Shake, and the larger Slim Shake, in fact. And I love throwing that on a, on a bigger shaky head, on like a half ounce shaky head, it's so good. Like with a five odd hook in it. Mm, so money for offshore rock and brush piles and things like that. But also around docks. It was, it was my first time really, really fishing it up under docks and I liked the way it was, it was coming through all the dock posts and everything, really good dock fishing bait. So uh, go get you some. I'll link it down below. You can always use code LFG for 10% off the entire Guggen Squad website. So there, there is that, there is always that. Smash that like button if you like bass fishing videos. And if you don't like bass fishing videos, oh well, I don't know why you're here. But you can also leave me a comment on what you'd maybe like to see next or some tips. As always, God bless you, tight lines. See you on the next one.